G'day viewers, today's video is another in conjunction with Warren from Aquariums and Escapes Australia where we try and answer the most commonly asked questions on the internet. And today's question is, how do I hatch baby brine shrimp? Well, I'm here to tell you it's as not as hard as you think. You can do it very simply and very cheaply with a few things you have at home. I don't have everything here at home at the moment, so it's time to quickly duck down the shops. So it's off to the local supermarket we go and we just want to get a nice shaped plastic bottle doesn't matter what's in it that's all up to you but we want something with a nice curve on it so as those eggs sink they go all the way down to the bottom and then when we connect the air it'll lift up and speaking of air the thing i find the easiest is just these little four mil poly risers that you use in the garden because they're rigid and that threaded end means it's easy to screw your airline on and off. If it's a barb, it tends to get stuck, but this way is a lot easier. Then after your bottle's empty and you've soaked it in a bit of warm water, enough for the sticky glue to come off the label, we peel that off and now let's make our hatchery. So here I have the empty bottle and here I have a pair of scissors. So now I've just got to wait for a grown-up to come home and cut this off for me and I'll be right back. And there we have it, the top's out, and we're ready to go. And that's it, that's the container made. And then now, for our poly riser, we just make sure to make life easy, make sure that's sticking out the top there somewhere. I'll get this label off, I'll soak this before I start. And then cut that end off on an angle. So that way I can't sit flat on the bottom and block any of that air out. So that will just sit in there, simple. So now we need to mix up the brew that we're going to hatch our brine shrimp in. And for that, I like to use just a milk bottle or for all the vegans out there, we have a vegan option, we use an orange juice bottle. And that way I can mix up a couple of liters at a time so I don't have to mix up for every single batch I do. This just makes it a little bit easier. Now here's a tip, I went to the, the cheap shop and bought a set of measuring spoons and took off all the ones I don't need so I don't get confused. So first off, two litres, we use some salt and I just use the cheap supermarket salt. You don't need to go buy an aquarium salt, this is the exact same stuff and about a quarter of the price at least. So you want between one and a half to two teaspoons per litre. So I'm going to do four teaspoons of salt in my two litre bottle. And then next, and this is where everybody's going to be different, depending on the pH of your water, we want to aim for a pH of between eight and nine. So for me, my tap water is mid sixes or so. So for me, it's three quarters of a teaspoon of bicarb soda and that'll raise the pH to where we need it. But you'll just have to play with it, add a little bit, test, add a little bit more, test, till you see where you want. And then we just fill this full of water. And if you're on town water, chlorinated or treated water, you don't have to worry about the chlorine. Chlorine's actually beneficial because it will help crack those eggs and hatch your shrimp even quicker. So I'll fill this up. Now our bottle's full, just give it a bit of a shake. Now, what do we do with the hatchery? We want, you know, 25, 26 degrees at least. They won't hatch if it's too cold. So for me, I hatch mine, I've made up a little stand in the fish room, which we'll get to in a moment. But if you don't, if you don't have a warm room, there's a few ways to go about it. One easy one is you just get a clip and mount it inside your fish tank, or you just get another little tank like this, put a heater in it, and you can eat the whole tank. And that way you can have 
several hatcheries going all at the same time. But let's set up a brew. And for the shrimp eggs, I just found these ones on eBay, but you just get yours wherever you get yours from. And so in this container, I'll take my scoop, and that's why I only had two, so I don't get confused. I'm going to put, that's a quarter of a teaspoon, and then if I need to do a few more, almost another full quarter of a teaspoon, and that'll be plenty in this little bottle. Don't get tempted to overfill it, because then it'll just get too crowded, and you'll lose that high hatch rate that we're after. So, off to the fish room, and let's fill her up. This is a little timber stand I, I whipped up for my hatchery, but you don't even have to get that carried away. You can just put it in a jar, or if you're grown up cut carefully, you can even just sit it in the base of the bottle. But I like this, it's just a little bit more stable. So, we add some water our mixed up brine solution and then take our garden poly riser this is why we want the thread I can line it up and that just screws on and it screws out easily for cleaning then we just pop that in then we need a light source to hatch our shrimp. I've just got this really little cheap LED tank light that I had laying around. So I'll put that on there. And now we'll just let that go. It takes more than about 24 hours. It's generally between 24 and 36, depending on temperature. And, and some people say it depends on salt and things like that. But for me, I can get a, a good harvest out of that within 24 hours. So we'll come back tomorrow and see how it looks. And we don't need that bubbling like crazy, blowing water and stuff everywhere. It's just enough to keep it all moving. And so as the eggs sink and fall down, they get lifted back up in that water column. So yeah, so I just have that ticking over, very simple. Here we are 24 hours later, and you take that out. And then now all the egg shells and unhatched eggs and things, that'll all float and the shrimp will head down towards that light. So we'll just give that a couple of minutes for that to separate. Now it looks like we've had a fairly decent hatch here. So all those, all the eggshells and unhatched eggs have floated to the top and all the shrimp have headed down the bottom. So the easiest way for me, I'll just grab a turkey base to give it a squeeze. Slowly down we go so we don't stir up all those shells. And then vac up a whole heap of those shrimp. So now for me there's still there's still a lot of shrimp still in there and there's probably a few unhatched eggs still so I'm going to put that in there because it's only been 24 hours so there's still probably a few more to hatch over the next 10 or 12 but I'll probably come back in about 8 and I'll feed out the rest but now I'll start up the next one and I'll do the same tomorrow so this one I'll come back Later on this afternoon and I'll, I can do an evening feed and feed what's left. But speaking of feeding, let's go and get into that. Now that there is just chocker block full of newly hatched baby brine shrimp. Now the best time to feed it is straight away because they've just hatched. Those shrimp are feeding off their own yolk sac and that's where all the protein is. And that's why it makes such a good feed thank you holly for kicking that stand move dog move thank you and that's what makes it such a good feed for feeding very young fry because it's high in protein from that yolk sac like these very very young angelfish fry it makes a fantastic feed and you can see they've been hooking into those shrimp or those little orange bellies. 
And if you don't want to feed your baby brine shrimp all at once, oh, I just put some in a little container like this and then you can go and put it in the fridge. And what that will do, the cold will slow down their metabolism so they won't devour all of that egg sac. So when you feed them out tomorrow, they'll still have plenty of that lovely protein left. And if you want to keep it for longer, you can even put it in the freezer. So once it's all empty, just give it a good rinse out and a wipe out if need be with a bit of hot water. And you'll be ready to go again. And if after a few a few rounds it starts getting a bit manky, it's starting to smell a bit funny, don't be afraid to hit it with a bit of bleach. But clean it right up. Don't forget to do your airline as well. But this is probably my favourite use for the live baby brine is feeding this big bunch of tetras. They just go absolutely crazy for it and it even brings out the big catfish knowing there's a bit of live food in the tank. Well, I hope this has answered all of your questions about hatching your own baby brine shrimp. But if I've forgotten anything or anything you're not sure about, feel free to fire away and ask a question. And also, are there any other beginner questions you'd like to answer in your own video. Well, if you like leaving likes, leave a like. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Holly, where did you go? Oh, there you are. Yes. Ooh, say hello. Thank you.